Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. They, we are showing the second game of the Tuesday Night Advanced Lecture at the LHS Club on February 21st, 2017. So I have another game to show against that expert, John Ward. I was black. This game was played in 1991. He and I played uh, about two dozen games, and I, every time I played French against him, so he would go hit the books, come back more prepared, and I do the same. So it's a battle of theoretical knowledge, really. So another d4, d5 Tarash variation. And this time, I decided to play a little bit differently. I suspected that he was well prepared. So one of the strategic ideas that a higher rated uses against a low rated, even at the Grandmaster, it works. To put the guy on his own, play a move that is not so popular. So I played a6. You don't see this move very often, but it's perfectly playable. a6 is a very important move in French defense in almost all variations of it. The idea behind this, of course, is to keep a piece from this square, and in some variations, advance in the b-pawn and maybe here on turn the bishop along this diagonal. So I played a6. He also made a good, useful move, non-committal moves, c3. Black eventually will play c5, but it's a hallmark of French defense. And white is already forming a nice chain here and may even go for advanced variation next. So in, I was on a tactical mood. I'm usually a positional player, and like you saw in the last game, knight f6 is the positional continuation. But in this game, I was on a tactical mood. I decided to play a tactical line. c5 is a tactical continuation. So he played ed. ED, this is all book so far, and knight g f3. Unlike the other variation where white moves this knight to e2 and the bishop is on d3, this move in this particular variation, tactical line c5, is perfectly playable. Black to play, just normal developing moves, knight c6. In French defense, often black's queen side gets developed and then he pays attention to the king side. White to play, knight b3. This move surprised me a little bit. You don't see this move very often at this early stage of the game. And of course, the idea behind this is to win a pawn here with knight takes pawn. So I felt like this is a waste of time, knight coming over here. And even though this move in many variations of French is not good, because of knight here and back, the loss of tempo com is compensated by the fact that he weighs two moves with that knight. So I played c4, and he played knight d2, and bishop d6. OK, so which side of the board black should be attacking? It would be a mistake to say, because these pawns are heading towards the queen side, black should attack on the queen side. And black, many, in many lines of French, it does attack on the queen side of the board. But this is an exceptional case. I have two bishops bearing down on white's king side. After I castle, I could use the e file. And it's like black is attack can flow more harmoniously on the king side. So I played bishop to e6. He played bishop e2, about the only square that he has. And I played knight f6. And he played knight f1. So he's trying to reroute the knight to either one of these squares. And the uh, knight obviously was misplaced here. There's not much future for this knight here, right? So might as well go to f1 and g3 and strengthen the king's side. On knight f4, every time your opponent makes a decentralizing move, this is an example of a decentralizing move, gets away from center. The square that it gives up, you want to occupy. So what's the best move against knight f1? Knight e4. Knight e4. Carpe diem. White to play, bishop e3. This is still part of the opening development moves. And black to play, castles. He also wants to get rid of castle, so played knight g3. And he's about to capture here. And after knight takes pawn, takes knight d2, both of these pawns would be hanging. OK. Usually, a good rule of thumb when it comes to trading pieces and pawns is to let your opponent initiate that. 
This is, I would say, the biggest difference among low-rated players and high-rated. Low-rated players, as soon as they see a trade, they go for it. They think chess is checkers. When there's a capture, they go capture. Let your opponent initiate the trade. Instead, strengthen that square. So f5, and of course, after knight takes, f-pawn takes, black all of a sudden would have overwhelming position. So f5 also created another threat, this fork. So already black is a slightly better. And of course, this was caused because of knight b3 and knight back. He lost to important tempi there. So white to play, he took anyways. And how should black recapture? F-pawn, of course. Now I have the two bishops and the half open f file. So you could say here, strategically, white is already lost. But it takes a few moves to prove it. Knight has only d2, right? Pardon me? The knight has only d2. Knight, uh, well, he has this square too. Yeah. But I probably kick it, and he goes to this square, which is not very comfortable. But he moved the knight to d2. His pieces are all bunched together. And uh, there's not much of scope for them. So it's black to play. One way that white can free his position is b3. It's black's move, of course, but let's assume it's white's. After b3, black's, black's least act, uh, uh, attractive option to play pawn takes pawn. Because white takes with this pawn, then he goes with c4, and white will have a better position. Trouble with this is that black doesn't have b5 because of a4. See, if I capture on a4, he takes here, and it smashes my central pawn formation. So in this position, I made a preventive move. I played b5 immediately. Of course, my ultimate goal is to attack on the king's side. But before I do that, I want to make sure that he doesn't have any counterattack, and he can't sack a piece or open me up all of a sudden. He played knight f1. This is also, yes, b3 was a good move also. But in that case, I could have played rook b8. And if he ever takes here, I'll take right with a b pawn, and black is good. So I played knight f1, of course, with the idea of knight here next, and maybe castling. So it's black to play. I also want to shift my pieces to the king side, because this is definitely my strength. So where, whichever area of the board is your strength, just by force, bring more pieces to that area. So I shift the knight, which doesn't have much of a future around here anyways. I'll play knight e7. Why to play knight g3? Where should, where should I deploy my knight? Ideally, my knight likes to come over here to hit on this weak square, or even f4, which it belongs to black right now. So knight g6. And he played queen d2. So I put more pressure on this square, but I still have knight f4 if I want to play, right? He's on it twice, I'm defending it twice, so I'm fine. Black to play, queen c7. Queen and rook and bishop are called long range pieces. That means from way back there, they do their work just fine. Unlike knights, that takes two, three moves to hop around and go forward. So I play queen c7. White to play. He played knight h5. The idea of this move is to strengthen the square and prevent me from playing knight f4. Of course, knight f4 is still playable. He's on it three times, and I'm defending it three times. But can you say who has more space in this position? Obviously black, he has one knight on my side of the board. I have two pawns over here, and that means he can't put pieces on these three squares. And it's just a matter of time. I can even force trade knights by coming over here. So the number one rule when you have a space advantage is to not trade pieces. It's like your knights are better than your opponent's knights. Your bishops are better than your opponent's bishop and just to squeeze your opponent and go as forward as possible. So it's black to play. I strike, I strike at his weakest spot. Knight on h4 threatening to go here. OK. Immediately, castling looks like a good move, but doesn't work too well. What's wrong with castling? 
Bishop takes pawn. It drops the pawn. So he played g3. It looks okay. It's kind of actually forced. So I could check over here. He has to take with the bishop, and I take with the rook. And this rook would be very nicely placed here. Trouble is, he will castle long. And even though he has difficult position, he may survive, or in time pressure, you know, anything can happen, right? But you could check on g2, and then the bishop comes. Okay, very good, that's what I did. I check on g2, and where should he go? He has to go to d. King f1 fails to bishop here, yeah. and because of that discovery, he has to move to king g1. And with a king on g1, his bishop, his king side is very much paralyzed, and this rook is pretty much out of the game. So he decided to walk away. King d1 makes better sense. Black to play. I could take the bishop, and he could capture with a queen, for example, and he'd be okay. But like I said, I don't want to trade pieces. I want to squeeze as much as I can get from this position. So first, I kick this, this knight with g6. You see, one of the points of this check is that I'm also controlling this square. And now, all of a sudden, I'm on this five times. One, two, three, four, five. And after his only move, which is knight f4, how many ways is this knight defended? Two, three. Three times. So that loses a pawn. So better position and a pawn up, that equals a win. So now it's just a matter of trading. I play knight takes f4. He played bishop takes. I played bishop takes. He played... Uh, G pawn takes, and I play queen takes. I'm a pawn out with better position. Now I want to trade. And of course, he shouldn't trade because he's down materially. So he played queen takes. Didn't have too many choices. This was about to fall next. Maybe he's trying to hold on to this now. After queen takes, rook takes. King e1 is the only way he can defend this pawn. Rook f1 fails to bishop here, right? King e1 he played. So he's trying to survive in a difficult position and a pawn down position. So the game only lasted three more moves from here. Oh, wow. So what should black play? There are several tempting moves. Bishop g4 forces the trade. Forcing trade of and bishops? You open your, your, uh, a bishop, your a rook. Up. Right. Yeah, there are there are really several winning continuations. Even bishop here, with the idea of doubling rooks on the f-file, is very tempting, and I think it works. But I played bishop f5. You see, I'm s at some point, I may advance this pawn. So I played h4 to have some space and preventing my bishop h3. Reasonable. Now I move the rook to the e file. So once I advance this pawn and trade it, all of a sudden these pieces are just well placed. And that's a lot of pressure that I exert along the e and f files. So it's white to play, rook h2, guarding this pawn one more time, reasonable move. And black to play. Black only had to play one more move, and white just got frustrated and resigned in this position. Uh, I don't know, bishop g4? You see, one idea behind h4 was to play h5 at some point and create some counterattack, even though at this stage of the game shouldn't really do much. So I've just played h5. And he just doesn't have much in this position anymore. So for example, let's say he tries to play king here with the idea of king here, that if he could play this, this would be very good for white. But immediately, it doesn't work because of check. Well, I could play rook takes, rook takes check. That was one way to go. Another one is immediate check and trying to win this pawn. And if he takes, then this rook here is, I'm sorry. When white takes, then rook here. And this pawn is going to drop. There's no way he can defend it. So that was another way to win. But he got frustrated in this difficult position and decided to give up when I played h5. But probably the simplest way. What do you think 
What simplest way is rook takes pawn? His downfall? He decided to continue the game. <laughs> Just kidding. OK, so it was a qu quick game, fairly 27 moves. And uh, it shows that France is really playable, perfectly good line. California's highest rated player, Varujan Akobian, he plays French as his number one repertoire against e4. And uh, some of the great players in history, some of the world champions, their main repertoire against e4 was French. I highly recommend it and hope you guys choose that line too.